Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I'm here today with a brand new video. Can you tell where I am? Hogwarts! That's right, today is all about Harry Potter, baby. I'm here at Universal Orlando to do the ultimate Harry Potter challenge. I've got over 20 things on my list that I want to do today in the Wizarding World. Treats, attractions, magic, shopping, you name it, we're going to do it. Tips and tricks are coming along the way to show you how to have the ultimate Harry Potter day. I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. We've got a lot to do. Asio. If you're unfamiliar with the Wizarding World of Harry Potter here at Universal Orlando, there are two sections. The first, the original, is Hogsmeade. This is that Islands of Adventure. This is where you've got Hogwarts Castle, Hagrid's Magical Creature, Motorbike Adventure TM, bunch of shopping, Honeydukes, Three Broomsticks, and then we've also got Diagon Alley over in the original park, Universal Studios Florida. That's where you've got Escape from Gringotts, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, the Leaky Cauldron. So the first thing you want to do when you get to Universal, especially if it's busy, like right now it's spring break, so it's clearly very busy, you want to get a virtual line for Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure TM. The virtual line passes start when the park opens, or do they? Today, I actually looked about 10 minutes before the park opens and I could get one. So my advice is to start looking for the virtual line for Hagrid's in the app 15 to 20 minutes before the park opens. Keep checking back and you're gonna get that virtual line. The first thing we're actually gonna do is gonna feel really counterintuitive because we just got in this park, but we're gonna leave. The Hogwarts Express, which is the train between the two parks, is different both ways and it ends up getting one of the longest lines in the park because of the capacity. So we're gonna ride it first, twice, because we're just wild like that. So when it comes to the Hogwarts Express, you can take it from Islands of Adventure, which is Hogsmeade, over to Universal Studios Florida, which is Diagon Alley and back. It's different both ways, so you're gonna wanna ride it twice if you're a diehard Harry Potter fan which I assume you are if you're interested in this video. Um, and because they can only put so few people in the cabin, um, it's been one party per cabin. So like I get my own cabin and normally can fit eight. This will get the longest line in the park. I'm not kidding, like multiple hours just to get on the train. So we're gonna ride the train twice. We're gonna go there and back again. Not a hobbit's tail and then we'll be done with the train. We can do the rest of our magical day. A couple things you need to know about the Hogwarts Express, because it is actually in park transportation, it's taking you from park to park. You have to have a park to park ticket to ride this. You can't just get on and ride it and then come back or anything like that. So if you're not getting a park to park ticket, unfortunately, you will not be riding the Hogwarts Express. I think it's really cool. It's probably faster to walk, especially when, especially when there's a long line but for the Harry Potter fans, you've got to go on the train. Okay, we've made it to Diagon Alley. It's right over there. We're at Universal Studios Florida, but wow. Wow, wow, wow. We're turning right back around. Hello. Um, Is this how I get to platform nine and three quarters? Platform nine and where? Three quarters. I don't, do you know where that is? I don't have $9 in. Yeah, I don't have nine and three quarters either. I'm sorry. Uh, that's what my ticket says. Yeah. I'll... Um, there's a nine and there's a 10 up there. Maybe I know we have that. Okay, yeah. I'll check those. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Is, is this how I get to nine and three quarters? I don't have any change. Are you good? Wait, do you need change? No, my platform is platform nine and three quarters. Nine, I have nine and ten upstairs. Okay. So, I mean, uh, you can head up that way and see what, what's up. Okay, I'll, I'll go look. I must Sounds be confused. Good. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, you're good. We've had people ask us that all day. So, oh, so silly. <laughs> see ya. You're silly. Uh -oh. 
helps you do it a bit of a run if you're nervous. Forget after you've ridden the train to come get your train selfie. Okay, we rode the train two times. We got our train selfie. I love the train. I think it is such a cool way to get between the parks and despite, uh, even past that, the Harry Potter nerd in me loves the train because it's such an integral part of the story. I mean, it's how Harry gets to Hogwarts. It's where he meets Ron and Hermione for the first time. It's where they meet Professor Lupin, who's my favorite character for the first time. So I feel like the train is absolutely a must do. And by doing it first, you've won really. I mean, I feel so magical right now. Like we've set the mood for the day. Like we are Harry right now. We just took the train from Diagon Alley into Hogsmeade. Like Hogwarts is right here. We are, we're in it. We're in it now. And we didn't have to wait in lines, which is magical for other reasons. Okay, and now that we're back in Hogsmeade, it's actually time for me to do Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure TM. The virtual line, you can find it within the app under virtual line experiences. Click on Hagrid's, it'll ask you how many people are in your party. Click next, and then you can select uh, the time that best works for you there in 30 minute increments. Go ahead and lock that time in and you've got your virtual line. You can have up to two virtual lines um, at two different attractions at any one time. So you could have Hagrid's and the Mummy or Hagrid's and Jimmy Fallon or what have you. But you can't have two for Hagrid's, obviously. You can change the time if you'd like. If there's more available for Hagrid's on a busy day like today, there's probably not gonna be any. So take whatever you can get. But don't lose hope if you go check and there aren't any. It'll tell you that maybe you should check back around 11, 2, and 4. Because if they can, they'll release more of them. So keep that on your radar. But your best advice, my best advice. Go to number eight. Thank you. Is to check 10, 15 plus minutes before the park opens and then keep checking. All right, my stuff is in a locker. If you're unfamiliar with Universal, at certain attractions you can't bring in things like bags yeah. you can bring in fanny packs to so this one um so if you have a fanny pack on you can wear it you can wear your lanyard um you can have things in your pocket but you can't bring like backpacks and stuff on it so they'll give you a complimentary locker you will need to keep your ticket or whatever you use to open the locker so your ticket or your phone if you have it in the app um with you so make sure to put that in your pocket if you're not aware haggard magical creature motorbike adventure tm is you go into a care of magical creatures class with Hagrid. But he and Arthur Weasley cook up a little harebrained scheme to make it more fun. Arthur puts an enchantment on Sirius's motorbike so that he duplicates it multiple times and then adds a little of his Arthur Weasley flair, which is code for Dragon's Fire. And as always, their scheme is gonna go awry and you're gonna see a lot of creatures, maybe some you didn't intend to. Thanks to the virtual line, I was only actually in the line for about 15 minutes, maybe not even that. I wish every attraction had virtual line, but so it's hard to get, it's dicey to get, you may not get one, but if you do, you don't have to wait. Honestly, the audacity of that attraction for being that good, it is so good. There it is. You're not allowed to film on it for safety. It is so good. Wow. Hagrid's, if you're a Harry Potter fan, it's obviously a must do. You're gonna see Fluffy, you're gonna see Scroots, you're gonna see Pixies and the Flying Car and the Centaurs and Devil Snare. It is so, so cool. And Hagrid, I guess he's cool too. But I, Cannot recommend this attraction enough for anyone. It's definitely my favorite ride at Universal Orlando. It may, it's definitely my favorite coaster ever. It might be my favorite ride of all time. That's a bold claim, but I just, it's amazing. A must do, a must do. Now that we have had three adventures already, 
It's only 10 a.m. We've ridden three attractions. It's time for a little nosh, so we are gonna go have breakfast at the Three Broomsticks. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in line. He said it should be about 30 minutes. We'll time it for you. Um, the Harry Potter restaurants are very popular. They're very, very enjoyable. They're lovely. So if you wanna eat or drink in Harry Potter, you're gonna have to maybe wait in line. Wait, I still have my hair up. Should I keep it up? I feel like a, a young colonial man ready to grab a musket and fight for his country. But for now, I'm gonna leave it. Anyway, um, no, I can't, it looks, it looks insane. I might go back up, it might, I don't know, we'll see. This is a long conversation about my hair that no one cares about and let's get back to what you do care about, which is Harry Potter. Three Broomsticks is typically a quick service restaurant um, and it serves at lunch and dinner traditional English things such as fish and chips and you can also do what they call the great feast which is like roasted chickens and ribs and uh, corn on the cob um, they do those things individually or you can do the great feast which serves four and they bring, bring you a big platter of it you've also got all kind of beverages in there such as butter beer um, some of the different juices pumpkin juice um, the orange fizz so I love the three broomsticks. If I was here at lunch and dinner, I would definitely be doing fish and chips because that's my personal favorite thing on the menu. But I've actually never had their breakfast and I've heard it's pretty good. So I have ordered breakfast and now I'm in line. The way the three broomsticks works right now is you're gonna wanna get in line and mobile order while you're waiting in line so that you have not wasted any time when you're sitting down. So you'll mobile order on the app, select what you'd like, you can put your AP discount on it. Um, and then once you get up to the front, they will send you to a table and bring it to you. Oh, that's so cool in here. So then when it's your turn, you'll get up to the front and the friendly witches and wizards will help you find a seat. Right now, it's just a few minutes before 10.30, which is when they stop serving breakfast. So a few minutes ago, they actually went up and down the line and asked if everybody was ordering breakfast or lunch. Um, and they're only letting in the people for the next few minutes that have breakfast in, and then they'll let in the lunch people next because um, they want to make sure everybody that wanted breakfast has it. Thank you. And I'm so excited for breakfast. Where am I going on a little adventure? Oh, this is like tripping me out because this is normally where you'd order. And I'm just going to come sit, I guess, where you'd normally order. But that's fine. I mean, look at my little table. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and I love this. Okay, this is something Universal does. Once you sit down, um, you pull up your mobile order in the app and then you hold your phone up to this tag. My phone never reads it. I think it's because I have a mount on the back of my phone. Um, so then you can actually just type in the number. So I typed in 906 and now someone will bring me my order. Once the Witcher Wizard brings you your order, you're welcome to ask for if you want a cup of water, if you need some extra condiments or anything, they'll get it for you. And you can just be seated and have a lovely breakfast. Here is my kids meal breakfast and I want to talk about how much food this is for $12.99. Okay, you get a croissant, sausage link bacon, looks like two pancakes, syrup, butter and jam, plus butter beer. And it's $12.99. The adult version of this has an extra pancake, but it's the same size butter beer and it's $17.99. All the breakfasts are $12.99 for the kids' meals and $17.99 for the adults. They've also got like a traditional English breakfast, a traditional American breakfast, a continental breakfast, but each of them comes with a drink and it can be a coffee, it can be a hot, or I'm sorry, it can be a coffee, it can be a hot cocoa, it can be a juice, it can be a butter beer, a frozen butter beer. And this is slightly smaller than the ones you'd get outside. This is 12 ounces, but like it's still a pretty good size and butter beer is really sweet and you're gonna wanna eat a lot in the Wizarding World and I'm gonna wanna try multiple butter beers so the fact that I can get this as part of my meal as a kids meal this is an incredible deal and then you know me I also ordered a coffee it's just plain coffee but they automatically brought me some sugar and then a little cup full of cream but this is also the full size that you would get if you decided to have coffee with your breakfast so you could order a kids meal and a cup and get a full-size coffee with it for $12.99 I'm just saying this is a great deal and if you eat a late breakfast like me this is kind of like a brunch now it's time to eat. I haven't had pancakes in so long. I'm normally more of a savory breakfast kind of gal, but pancakes just spoke to me. Mm. Ooh, and I'm glad they did. Those are so good. Perfect pancakes. How can you not? Bacon. Yes, I put syrup on the bacon. Yes, it's delicious. Mm. Nice crispy bacon. Let's try the sausage out. Mmm. Ooh, that is really good. 
nice and crispy on the outside. Flavorful on the inside. I normally like bacon more, but I think the sausage has done it with how crispy it is. Oh my gosh. Loving that. Put syrup on that too. All right. I put both butter and jam on my croissant. Mm, that's so good. Nothing crazy here as far as flavors go. I'm very dazzled by the sausage. And mostly I'm impressed by how much food you're getting for $12.99 for a kid's meal. And as you may have noticed, I'm not a child. We may act like one and eat like one, but I don't have a kid with me or anything. They didn't have any issues with me ordering a kid's meal. That's actually one of my pro tips for just life in theme parks is eat kid's meals because they're smaller, they're less expensive, and you want to eat so many things that you don't get as full. And I'm getting my butter beer. Mm. So this is the classic. It's slightly less sweet than the frozen. Um, the frozen, I feel like if you're only gonna try one, you gotta do the frozen. But I actually think I like this one just a little more. I like how easily it goes down. And it, it just makes me feel, like I feel like this is the one they're drinking in the books. Cause they drink it out of bottles. So it can't be the frozen or the hot. It's gotta be this. And I just feel like I'm Hermione Granger right now. Breakfast at the uh, Three Room Six. So far, a, a real success on this great day. In the interest of time, since we're already inside the Three Broomsticks, which is attached to the Hog's Head, we're gonna go ahead and get our Hog's Head Brew, which is an exclusive beer, not only to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, but it's an exclusive beer to the Hog's Head. You cannot get this on the other side of the park. All right, so this is the Hogshead Brew. Again, you can only get it here at the Hogshead, which is attached to the Three Broomsticks. You don't have to go into the Three Broomsticks to get in the bar. You can just go into the Hogshead Pub. Um, they do sell butterbeer. They sell other beverages there, um, but it does tend to get a long line, which is why I wanted to go ahead and grab it while I was already in there. Plus, we're about to go see a show, so we have a beverage to enjoy with our show. Um, and there are three exclusive beers to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. There's Dragon Scale, Wizard Brew, and then the Hogshead Brew. But the Dragon Scale you can get anywhere. And again, this one you can only get here, so I'm all about that life. I'm not normally a darker beer drinker, but this is really good. It's not super dark. It's very refreshing, actually. It's not as heavy as I expected it to be. I'm enjoying it. I'm also enjoying this sign that says, please do not feed the birds and other winged creatures. So have a pint from the Hogshead. Check that one off the list and it's the exclusive pints. What's the best pint? What a lot of people might not realize is there's actually some great entertainment in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. There are different shows here um, in Hogsmeade, right next to Hogwarts. You've got two different shows. And then there's also two different shows on the stage over at Diagon Alley. And because we're doing it all today, we're gonna watch all four of them, hopefully, as long as nothing goes awry. The two shows that you can see here on the Hogsmeade stage are the Frog Choir, which we're about to see in about 10 minutes. And then they also do the Triwizard Spirit Rally. So they have students from Durmstrang and Beau Baton come and demonstrate their skills. Think the beginning of Goblet of Fire when they march into Hogwarts. It's a very busy day, but luckily the parks are open till 10 o'clock tonight. So I think we can still get it all done, but it's gonna be tricky with all the stuff I have on my list currently. Flight of the Hippogriff is at capacity, meaning there's literally no more room in their line. Um, Forbidden Journey, which is the ride inside the castle, has a 110 minute wait. It just opened up from being at capacity. Escape from Gringotts over on the other side has a 110 minute wait, and the train going both ways has about a 90 minute wait. So I told you we were smart for riding that first. <laughs> Let's just say the Frog Choir has learned some new songs. Before they always did Double Double Toil and Trouble, which is a bop from Prisoner of Azkaban, the movie, not the book. It's actually from Shakespeare. Anyway, and they normally do like the Hogwarts alma mater, but they have some new songs, including Can You Dance Like a Hippogriff? And that song slaps. I always said to come to the Frog Choir, like if you just happen to see them, it was good. But now I'm actually like, you should check the schedule and see when they come, because that was really fun. You know me, I love live entertainment at theme parks. The Frog Choir crushed it. The Slytherin was obviously the best one. But wow, what a treat that was. Okay, at this point, 
there are three main things we need to do in this side. We need to do Forbidden Journey, which is the one inside the castle. It's got a 110 minute wait. We need to do Flight of the Hippogriff, which has an 80 minute wait. And then we also want to see the Triwizard Spirit Rally. Um, and then we also, I guess we do want to go into Honey Dukes, which is on my list as well for another tasty treat. So because these wait times are so long and because most of the non-ride stuff we want to do is over at the other park, um, that's where we want to get our wand. That's where we want to do some more eating and shopping because the better shops are over in Diagon Alley. We're going to go ahead and leave this one. We're going to go on foot like muggles over to Universal Studios Florida to go to Diagon Alley. Hopefully knock out some of that non-ride stuff while the waits are really long for everything. And then we'll come back over here again. This park's open until 10 o'clock at night. So I'm hoping if we come back around six or seven, it's like noon right now. We can see the last, one of the last shows in the Spirit Rally. They have shows at six and at seven. And then also that these two rides will have shorter ways. Before we leave Hogsmeade, we're gonna pop into Honey Dukes, which is the iconic candy shop, get ourselves a candy treat. And Honey Dukes is awesome because they have all kinds of treats that you've read about or seen in the movies. They've got exploding bonbons and fizzing whizbees, chocolate frogs. Pretty bots every flavored beans. So getting a treat from Honey Dukes, definitely a must do in my book. Honey Dukes also has a delicious bakery case with all kinds of fudge and caramel apples and different treats, pumpkin cakes, witch hat cupcakes. They often, they must have sold out. They have cauldron cakes and pumpkin pasties and other things you've heard about. For our Honey Dukes treat, we're gonna get a chocolate frog because they do have the collectible playing cards in them. And it's a big hunk of chocolate. It's literally a solid frog made of chocolate. I keep it in my freezer and I munch on it when I need something sweet for like ever because it's really a lot of chocolate. All right, I got my chocolate frog. See what I mean? He's literally like a giant hunk of chocolate, but let's see what card we get. We got Helga Hufflepuff. I'm gonna have to give this to Morgan. I think she will appreciate this more than I will. But that's nice. It's like Morgan's here with me now. At this point, the parks have actually hit capacity, but I believe since I've already been in one park, I can hop to the other one. They actually even opened up this walkway here in between the two parks. This is right in the middle of Seuss Landing. I think I can just walk over and not have to walk all the way around. We've made it back on the other side. But before we go into Diagon Alley, there's two things I can easily check off the list from right out here. <laughs> the first is saying hello to the night bus driver. Hello. Hello, hello Tim. How are you? Uh, well, I got a question before I answer that. Yes. You're a Slytherin? I am. And you're up to no good. As always. Well then, how am I? Uh, I've been better. You've um, been better? Yeah, you're not going to hurt me, are you? I would never. You seem That's nice. exactly what someone who's going to hurt me would say. I, I, you seem nice enough, just don't... Do anything that would make me hurt you. I Don't guess. do anything that would make you hurt me. Yeah, it would probably be your fault. It would be my. That, that's the Slytherin. Yeah, you know that makes sense. Mantra, right. you know. Anyway, I'm I'm evil too, just so you know. Sure. We're on the same side. I can tell. Right. What should I do in Dying on Alley? Um, well, you probably like Nocturne Alley. I'm gonna go to Nocturne Alley. I wouldn't go in there. It's no. Very evil and dark. Yeah, I'm gonna go pick up some some casual things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they won't be evil at all. No. Definitely no, not. You wouldn't want that. Yeah, right. Uh, right. All right, well, it's good to see you. It's been frightening. Have a great day. The night bus is right here parked outside and you can often talk to the night bus driver and his shrunken head. It's very fun. I recommend talking to them. It was very funny. I loved it. But there's someone else we need to say hello to around here. Absolutely one of my favorite things about the Wizarding World is all the details. I did a whole video of all the Easter eggs and things you can look for and little things you can do. But one of my favorite ones is here, again, number 12, Gribbled Place, headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix. You can see that it looks different than the others, 11 and 13 on either side. And if you wait here long enough, Creature will pop out and say hello. Hi, Creature. Oh, Hi, buddy. Thanks for the soup. Oh, you're back. I'm back. Well, your friend is awake now. Friend is a strong word, but okay. Um, <laughs> Hello. Yes, he is awake. Wild one. Um, what was your name again? Slytherin. Slytherin. 
Yeah, Molly. Coincidence. Molly yeah, is, is my Molly is Slytherin. Molly is Slytherin. Yes, one, that's one, Molly. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. I'm hanging around my best friend, waiting to put my good for nothing giant. Mate, while you were sleeping, she was threatening me. She was threatening you? Yeah. Why you trap my bait for? What you say to him? Get her. What you say to him? I just, I told him, I didn't, I said I wouldn't hurt him unless he made me. Right. Okay, technically that, that wasn't a threat, that, that was more like a promise. No, yeah, that, yeah exactly. A promise <laughs> a to do bad things. A Slytherin promise. A Slytherin promise. Yeah. Right. I'm going to go get a butterbeer. Do you yeah. guys need anything? Yes, please. A body sanity, like butterbeer, that'd be great. Oh, Ooh. if you uh, couldn't come back, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do. I'll be back with no, a no, butter. Don't come back. Oh, don't come back. Don't Got come it. Back. Got All it. Right. Have a good day. Bye bye, Lou. I hope I never see you again. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, it's amazing! I will never get over how incredible this is. Wow. Just like there's a stage over at Hogsy, there's a stage here in Diagon Alley to do a couple shows, and one's gonna start in just about five minutes. And I'm very excited to watch it, but I need a refreshment. So I just put in a mobile order here at the Hopping Pot. This is a quick service drink cart. They sell a couple snacks, butterbeer ice cream, um, beef pasties, but they mostly sell butterbeer, frozen butterbeer. They'll do the hot butterbeer, regular beer, gilly waters, pumpkin juice, all the specialty drinks. A lot of them you can get right here at the Hopping Pot. But all these people, they're waiting in line like chumps. And what we've done is mobile order. And now we don't have to wait in the line. You come over here to the left-hand side, wait for the witch or wizard to call you forward, and they'll get your mobile order for you. This is the tongue tying lemon squash. It's basically like the best lemonade you'll ever have. Literally has a whole lemon in it. And guess how long I waited to get it? Uh, 56 seconds approximately. They took me right away. I just waited by that trash can and they pulled me ahead of other people to pick up my mobile order. Mm. Again, it's like the best lemonade you'll ever have. Nice and tart. Oh, this is the Tales of Beetle the Bard. We'll watch this. Uh, you may remember Beetle the Bard from Deathly Hallows. It's the book that uh, Dumbledore gifts Hermione. It's kind of like the Aesop's Fables of the Wizarding World. You can buy it if you want it. Um, and the most famous tale is the one we just saw, The Tale of the Three Brothers, which is, of course, the tale of the Deathly Hallows, the um, Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, and the Invisibility Cloak. So I'm glad we got to see that one. That's my favorite one. I love the puppets and everything. Um, and that show happens several times a day. It's only about 10, 12 minutes long. It's enjoyable right here. Um, we've got now about 15 minutes till Celestina does come out. So I may do one thing in between so we can keep checking things off our Wizarding World must-do list. Right here in Diagon Alley is the Gringotts Money Exchange. This is where you can exchange muggle, muggle cash or plastic for Wizarding dollars. It's a dollar for dollar exchange and then you can use it all over the Wizarding World as well as all of Universal Orlando. You don't have to just use it in the Wizarding World parts. Um, but it's a really fun thing that not a lot of people know about that you can do to kind of even enhance your Wizarding World experience. So we're gonna get a little bit of cash monies, some Gringotts banknotes. That way when we do some shopping later, we're buying things in Wizarding money. What's your name? Did you have a question? Yes, what's your name? Oh, I apologize. You may refer to me simply as Sir. Will do, sir. Thank you. We are actually able to check off two of my Harry Potter bucket list things while we're waiting for Celestina. One, I did swap out some money at the Gringotts Bank Exchange. You don't have to do that. The shops obviously take credit cards and room charges and cash, but I think it's really fun and it's a great way for your kids to have a limited number. Like you could get them 20 or uh, 10 or however much you want. It comes in 20s and 10s, wizarding money and give it to them and then say, this is what you have to spend your souvenir. 
I think it's just more fun if you're going to buy like a wand to buy it with wizarding money. Um, and then I also got to see the fire breathing dragon. So the dragon on top of Gringotts Bay breathes fire every 10 minutes on the 10. So at one o'clock, 110, 120, 130, et cetera, et cetera, as long as the weather is okay. If it's too windy, it won't do it. But on the 10, every 10 minutes, he does breathe fire. So seeing the dragon breathe fire, absolutely a must. If you can see it at night, a double must. Okay, Celestina, wow, she has some sweet pipes and I'm obsessed with her dress. Uh, I love watching her, I, I, I always say it, I love live entertainment in the theme park, so if you're around and Celestina singing, definitely catch it, grab yourself a butter beer and enjoy. Keep in mind though, you can remove your mask when you're eating and drinking and stationary and distance from other people. Before the shows, there's really no one around, but then everyone crowds for the show, so keep that in mind with the mask. Um, okay, so it's about 1.45 right now, we have over 15 things left on our list, because we had almost 30 to begin with. Um, Escape from Gringotts is on our list, but it has a three hour wait right now. We're not waiting three hours. Um, and then pretty much everything else here is shops and eating. So we are gonna go ahead and make our big purchase of the day. You and I both know what it is, ice cream. No, a wand, but we are gonna get ice cream too. There are multiple ways you can get a wand. Um, you can just buy one at Ollivander's. He has a location, both Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade. They also have a wand experience you can do, um, where when I did it in a wand video, which we can link for you, you signed up for a time and came back, and they only had one party at a time in there, so I automatically got chosen to get the wand. Um, now it's just a standby queue, and they're putting small parties together, up to eight to 10 people, what can fit safely and distanced. Um, so you could wait up to, it's 90 minutes right now, it's two hours earlier, and then not even be the person chosen to get the wand. So if you've never done it or you come on a slow day and it's not that long, I would recommend waiting. Um, but on a day like today where it's very, very busy, I don't think I, I mean, it's very, very cool when you're the person chosen. It's one of the coolest things I've done in a theme park. But since you can't guarantee that you or someone in your family gets chosen, I'm going to recommend just buying a wand because you still get to go into Ollivander's. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so this is the line to just go into Ollivander's to go shopping. Pretty long right now, so we might actually save the wand buying for a little bit later. What I would recommend normally is to do, yeah, look how long that is. Oh, I wonder if Wands by Gorovich is open. Does it look like it is? So what I would recommend, the fun part about the wand while acquiring the wand from Ollivanders and doing the wand experience is really fun. The fun part is actually doing the magic. So what I would recommend is buying your wand pretty early in the day if you can. And that way you've got plenty of time to do the magic. I'd also recommend not coming when it's this busy, if you can avoid it, of course. I know that's when everyone wants to come because the kids are out of school, but you see how long things are. This is just to get into a store. Okay, a few pro tips. First of all, I just talked to a witch at Elevator. She said that line's probably about 45 minutes to get into the wand shop. And really the only time they don't have a line is like first thing in the morning, especially if you could get here with early park hours. But I wouldn't recommend using your early park hours, which is the resort guest perk of getting in early to get a wand. I would recommend that to ride rides. So here's a few tips. One, if you don't care about buying your wand in Wizarding World of Harry Potter, you can actually buy it at the Universal Studios stores. The big ones at the beginning of each park and there's one in City Walk as well. Two, get here early. Three, stay late, but then you don't get that much time to actually do magic if you wait until like six or seven at night. You don't get that much time to actually use the wand. But what we're gonna try right now, she said she thinks they sell some of the darker character wands in Borgen and Burks. Fine by me, I'm a Slytherin. And going to Borgen and Burks is on our list anyway, because we have a few shops. All the shopping's amazing. I did a full shopping video exploring every single shop. We'll link that for you. But I had a couple on my best of list that we got to do today. I wanted us to buy a creature at the Magic Menagerie, buy a joke from the Weasleys, buy something with our house on it in one of the other shops. And then I did have visit the Vanishing Cabinet, which means Borgen and Burks. So let's go. And maybe there's a one there too. If you're not sure what Nocturne Alley is, it's back this way. It's the offshoot of Diagon Alley where the uh, 
CD or Wizards like to hang out. And uh, Borgen and Burks is a magic shop that's maybe, you know, you might find the Malfoys hanging out in there. We'll say that. Tom Riddle used to work there. We'll say that. So let's go to Borgen and Burks. Oh, and I am shocked and delighted to find there's no line to get into Borgen and Burks. Oh my gosh, what a nightmare. I've never noticed this doll before. How terrifying is that? Home to some less than savory items. The Hand of Glory, for example. Cursed necklace. Okay. Ooh, it is scary in here. Okay, what our Morgan and Burke checklist was, was to check on the vanishing cabinet, see if we could figure out what was going on with it. All right, if you recall in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, Draco Malfoy figures out how to repair a vanishing cabinet that's been lost in the room of requirement at Hogwarts, and its partner is here in Borgen and Burks, and he figures out how to repair it so that the Death Eaters can get into Hogwarts. But what does he use to test it? A bird. Do you hear it? Okay, we've checked on the vanishing cabinet. It seems like it still works. Do you think if I climb into it, I could get to Draco Malfoy? Interesting. Uh, but for now, I do see ones. So we may have just found out a fun hack tip together about another place to buy ones um, if you're in Slytherin. Obviously, I don't think anyone else. I don't know whose ones are in here yet, but I do see some, so we'll find out. But I'm thinking it's just gonna be those so folks that lean on the Slytherin side that care about these ones. Oh, okay. Um, first things first, I'm literally furious at how awesome Peter Pettigrew's is because right. he is trash and he is I the coolest wand ever. The reason it's a snake is this one is the one that the Dark Lord gifted him. Oh. So I want to be the reason it's a snake is because, you know, Peter Pettigrew's Animagus is a rat. Yes. To continue instilling that fear. Because yeah. Peter Pettigrew's loyalty is only based on working. Yeah. We all know that. So yeah. So for him to give him a snake, not something to the that means what to his door, and Animagus is what they want to do. And you're scared if you continue to do that. Thank you. Marsha, my new favorite person. That was so amazing. <laughs> okay, which wand should I get? I already have Narcissus because hers is the coolest looking of the darks. Nice. I know, it's nice. I feel like it's really bad if I get Voldemort's. That's probably like too far. In the, I don't have Bellatrix and I'm kind of I'm kind of looking at Sirius's. I love Sirius. Yeah. Oh. If you'll notice right here on the edges, you'll have three out of the four sides have two, where this one's only having one. That's the side you're supposed to hold the wand with. Any other side is going to backtrack on you. Oh, well, okay, we need that one then. <laughs> Sirius is black wand. Here's some wizard money. So when, when you buy a wand, it comes with the map of both Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade. It's dual sided, it shows you where all the spells are. And then you also get your wand. So this is Sirius Black's wand who is one of my favorite characters. And the reason I got it, she was explaining, if you look at the symbol right here, Sirius booby-trapped his wand because one side is different than the others. And if you don't hold it properly, if I were to hold it like this, the wand would know it wasn't Sirius and backfire on him. So now that we have acquired a wand, let's go do some magic. Incendio, magic. I am, in fact, magic. I knew it. Terran Telegra. Look at that, a ballet. A ballet of trolls. It's beautiful. I really think the interactive wands are one of the most fun things about this land because I mean, if you've read or seen Harry Potter, all you want to do is be able to do magic and this lets you. So there's a lot more spots here in Diagon Alley, but there are spots over in Hogsmeade as well. But getting a wand and performing magic, absolutely a must do in the Wizarding World. The next thing on our must do list, ice cream from Florian Fortescue's. This is the ice cream parlor that Harry visits frequently throughout the books, especially in Prisoner of Azkaban. And they serve his favorite ice cream, which is what we're gonna get. Florian Fortescue's has all kinds of different flavors. Look at all those soft serves. Banana, chocolate, Granny Smith, mint, pistachio, vanilla, orange marmalade, toffee, toffee, apple, strawberries, and cream. 
They feature butterbeer ice cream, but you can also get butterbeer ice cream at the Hopping Pot, and you wouldn't have to wait in line, just saying. And then also Harry's favorite chocolate strawberry peanut butter sundae, which has hot fudge, strawberry peanut butter ice cream, and shortbread crumbles in a souvenir glass you can take home. And then they've also got hard pack ice cream, chocolate chili, epi apple crumble, vanilla, salted caramel, blondie, chocolate, clotted cream, earl gray, sticky toffee pudding, chocolate raspberry, strawberry, and peanut butter. And then you can get them topped. They've got cones, they've got cups. I got my ice cream, I got, whenever you get a cone, you get two scoops. I got strawberry peanut butter, which is Harry's favorite flavor. And then I got the sticky toffee pudding at the witch's recommendation. I'm gonna eat it with my friend here, the snake from Magical Menagerie. Hello, good to see you, haven't seen you in a while. Ooh. Okay, the sticky toffee pudding's amazing. Tastes like caramel and toffee. And now strawberry peanut butter. I, we will catch up in a minute. You're talking very loud. Mm. Okay, I love peanut butter. It kind of tastes like a peanut butter and jelly. And it does go really well with the sticky toffee pudding. I told you we would talk in a second. They can't even understand you when you speak parcel tongue. Now that we are fueled by another sugary treat, it's time to do some shopping. I have a few different things on my shopping list today. The first on my bucket list, adopt a creature. And where else would I want to adopt a creature other than the Magical Menagerie? The Magical Menagerie has every kind of creature that you can possibly imagine. From owls, to crookshanks, to hippogriffs, to three-headed dogs, you can have it all. But what do we want to adopt? Let's decide. We could adopt a pixie or a bow truffle. I don't really want a bow truffle, although he is very, very cute. Frog, I could be part of the frog choir. Who wants to adopt a spider? Not this gal. A unicorn. Maybe we'll adopt a hippogriff. You could adopt the grim, the black dog. I definitely don't want a rat. I've Peter Pettigrew taught me that. Um, I could adopt Crookshanks, but I already have a cat that doesn't really like me in my house. I already have a Pygmy Puff. Loop and Bob Fluffy Pants is safe and sound at home. If you adopt a Pygmy Puff at Wizards Wizard of Weezes, they make a big announcement about the name. It's very fun. Um, oh, a snake for my Slytherin side, perhaps? A dragon and an egg? A phoenix? Hmm. Ooh, maybe I want a Niffler. They're not in the Harry Potter movies, but they're in the Fantastic Beasts movies, which I prefer not to acknowledge exist. Um, but they're in the books. They're in Goblet of Fire, and they're very cute. A, a plush bow truckle? I've never noticed that they sell the rat tonic here. Remember Prisoner of Azkaban when Ron asks for something to help Scavers because something's wrong with him, and what's wrong with him is that he was a middle-aged man sleeping in Ron's bed with him. All right, so ultimately, if I was in the Wizarding World, the two creatures I'd be most jazzed about would be having an owl, like Hedwig, but I don't want a puppet or a backpack owl. And I do like that keychain, but it's rather large. And the other one I'd want is a hippogriff. And as it turns out, there's a very adorable tiny hippogriff keychain. And this is what creature we're gonna adopt, this baby buff beak right here. Shopping stop one done. Well, I guess that was shopping stop two because we went to Borgen and Burks, which was on my list. We got our wands there. And now we have adopted a hippogriff. And now we need to buy a joke. Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, of course, owned and operated by Fred and George Weasley. And that's the happy ending. They own and operate it forever for the rest of time. And nothing bad ever happens to either one of them. So let's go in and buy ourselves a joke. All right, Weasley's Wizard Weezes has all kinds of iconic jokes and things from the movies. Let's see, you can get your nosebleed nougat, your fever fudge, your different skyving snack box ingredients, fainting fantasies and puking pastels. You can adopt a pygmy puff here. You can get you know poo, your extendable ears, some classic muggle, jokes that they stock because their father Arthur likes it. I have this shirt. It's awesome. Various games and jokes galore. Lots of cool details in here, but the best one is, of course, everyone's least favorite high inquisitor. 
Dolores Umbridge is in the building. Doing manual labor for the Weasleys, which I love. Metal puzzles. I mean, you can go full in on the love potions if you want a love potion necklace or some edible love potion. You can go full in on the pygmy puffs. Literally, you could go head to toe pygmy puff if you wanted to. If you're really into the Skyving snack box, you can actually buy this one that folds out. But what we're gonna buy is a new game. It's actually a game that you can take home and play. They play it in the books, Exploding Snap. A quick to get, act quickly to get rid of your cards. No taking turns at any moment. The game may explode and change who's winning. Sounds fun, I love card games. So we're gonna buy ourselves Exploding Snap at the Weasleys. Right next to Weasleys Wizard Wheezes is quality Quidditch supplies. Now another thing on my shopping list is to buy something with my house logo, so something Slytherin. I've always loved these jerseys that you can get personalized if you want, or they have Malfoy on it, or you can personalize it like that, so that's an option. I always enjoy a hat. They've got scarves in here. If you are a Quidditch fan, this is where you want to shop. I've done a video all about just the shops with a full in-depth tour of what all of them sell and what kinds of fun goodies you can take home with you. So we'll link that for you. Because right now I'm just shopping quickly for a Slytherin goodie. I may get it over at Madame Elkins. Maybe I'll get it over back at Hogsmeade. Who's to say? But I need something that says Slytherin on it for the day, I think. I saw there wasn't a very long line for the Leaky Cauldron, so we're gonna go feed again or maybe get a drink. But the Leaky Cauldron is another, uh, normally it's a full service restaurant, but right now it's operating just like the Three Broomsticks where you'll order on your phone and then they'll bring it to your table. And it's really, really cool in here. So definitely eating at Leaky Cauldron's on your list when you're doing everything Harry Potter. Okay, so I finally got my table and I'm doing the same thing as I did at Three Broomsticks where I typed it in on the app and a lovely witch or wizard will bring it to me. I want to let you know, it did take about 40, 35, 40 minutes from where I started in line to get a table. So it does take a while. Just keep that in mind as well when you're eating. Try not to linger if possible, because there's people waiting for a table. And I didn't even start that far back. I saw it all the way back through Nocturne Alley earlier, and I did not wait that far back. But look how cool it is in here. I absolutely love it. Like, okay, I'm just now noticing, look up at the top, they've got all that architecture in the beams. There's horses and is that a hippogriff? Oh my gosh, this is so cool in here. I absolutely love it. It looks like it came fresh off the movie set. Fish and chips, a must when you visit the Wizarding World. This is actually the kids' fish and chips. Again, I love eating off the kids' menu because you get smaller portions of the same food and that means you get to eat lots of things. So I got one piece of fish, a couple of wedges, chips if you will, grapes, lemon for the fish, malt vinegar, tartar sauce, and then I just asked for a cup of water, and then I got another something that we're gonna address in a minute, because it's another item on our list. I'm not a big seafood person, but you know what? It, it's fried and covered in malt vinegar, so. Mm. So, so yummy. Lots of good white fish I find, I guess it'd be haddock or cod. Nice and crispy on the outside. A plus tartar sauce game. Comparing it to the one in the UK, in Epcot, because that's the most obvious comparison. I feel like the batter is better there, but when you get it at the stand, you don't get the homemade tartar sauce. You can get the packets of tartar sauce, and you don't get a lemon. You get all the malt vinegar you want. That's a big plus. So I want to say it's kind of a dead heat, because while that one's probably better, like just the piece of fish and the breading, this one has better accoutrement, the homemade tartar sauce and the lemon juice. And this kid's portion is perfect because we have a few more sweets I want to eat today to finish off our ultimate Harry Potter challenge. So this is like just enough savory. Okay, do you want to know this sweet, sweet, sweet secret surprise we got at the Leaky Cauldron? Hot butter beer, baby, it's still around. Normally hot butter beer is only available when it's cold, but they extended it cast member, team member, wizard, which didn't know how long it was gonna be, but they still have hot butter beer at the locations. Three broomstick, leaky cauldron, and the hopping pot. Hot butter beer is my favorite butter beer, but we are gonna do an epic butter beer throwdown at the end of this, because by the end of this day, I will have had all three forms of liquid butter beer. 
Oh, it tastes like drinking liquid butterscotch with vanilla. It's so sweet, but I love it, which is weird because I don't normally like sweet stuff, but when it's cooler outside, this is so good. But right now, we're gonna take it to a very long line. Y'all, because if the wizarding gods know what I'm trying to do, we've still got a lot of stuff to do and not that much time left to do it. And I was kind of panicking because it's about 4.30 right now and I still need to ride Escape from Gringotts and get back over to Hogsmeade before seven o'clock, which is the last Triwizard Spirit Rally. Plus, we gotta ride two rides over there that are having long lines. But anyway, the wait time just dropped. It's been about three hours all day, then for a while it was two hours. It's now 100 minutes, which is still very long for a ride and longer than I normally wait, but it's the lowest I've seen it all day. So let's do it. I've been in line for almost exactly an hour and I'm just now about to go into the bank. So I'm thinking this 100 minute wait time is pretty accurate, but we'll see. If you're not aware of the plot of Escape from Gringotts, this takes place exactly at the moment in Deathly Hallows when Harry and Ron or, and Hermione break into the Gringotts vaults to steal the Horcrux out of Bellatrix Lestrange's vault. So that's the exact moment that this takes place. It's a really fun attraction. It's like a roller coaster 3D simulator hybrid that takes you down into the vaults. Now that we're inside, we've been moving at a much faster clip. Also, there's a lot more to look at, so that helps. Just one. Go five on the right. On the right, okay. Escape from Gringotts, so much fun. Ended up being only about 80 minutes, not 100 minutes, so I'll take it, I guess. I don't really wait in line for things very much just because I'm here a lot and a lot of videos I do are telling you how not to wait in line. I'm sure if I waited a little bit later, it would go down, but we're going back to the other park to do the same thing. So all in all, I guess it's not a terrible amount of time to wait, especially because I didn't have to wait at Hagrid's at all because I got the virtual line. So um, yeah, tell me what the longest you've waited in line for something is down in the comments. And now I'm just briefly browsing um, Wiseacre's equipment to see if there's anything from Slytherin that I want to get for my house souvenir. And then we're scooting over back to Hogsmeade. Little notepads. If you need anything for class, a journal, a date book, something like that. I love that you can personalize some of these. Like this one and this one, they can actually personalize, which is really cool. They're $20 and then you pay to personalize them. Oh, it gets even, they have a wax seal kit for each house. Okay, now that's awesome. What do I, do I need to send letters to people to use that? Should I get bookmarks for when I'm reading? Hmm, all kinds of Christmas ornaments. I already actually have several of those. So I don't think I need a new ornament, more generic, not house stuff. So we're still on the look for my perfect house souvenir. This would be a great time of year to do what I did in a recent video where I stayed at Royal Pacific, which is a universal resort that gives you free express pass as part of the perks for every person on your check-in day and your check-out day and every day in between. You get express pass, which would get you on all the rides except for Hagrid with little to no weight. And if you pay for it, it can cost upwards of $200 a person a day. So check that video out as well. I also did a video showing you how much you can accomplish with Express Pass in one day. We can link both of those for you. But Express Pass would be great on a day like today. There's also a much, much shorter line at the Leaky Cauldron than there was before. So it's about a little after six. Seems like that's a good time to come to Diagon Alley on a busy day. All right, we are bidding adieu to the dragon in Diagon Alley and headed back to Hogsmeade. Another great thing you should take advantage of, um, if you stay at a Universal Resort, you get um, early park admission, which is basically their version of extra magic hours. Both parks might have it one day or just one park, but you get into the park an hour early um, and you'd be able to get on Gringotts or Hagrid's if that park is one of the ones that's open early. So that's another great way to get in here early and get stuff done. That walkway I used earlier that went backstage that connected the two parks is now closed, which 
means we just have to walk a little bit faster. That probably saved 10 minutes off my walk because it dumped me faster into the park, further into the park than I'm gonna get than if I just go in the main entrance, but that's fine. We can do it. We got half an hour to get over to the other park and back to Hogsmeade. We have made it back into Hogsmeade. About 15 minutes to spare before the show. And don't forget, we still have two rides to do. Got to get frozen butterbeer. And we got to get something Slytherin. So we still have quite a few things left to do. There's about three hours of part-time left. This is the Tri-Wizard Spirit Rally. So this is the one where the Durmstrang gentlemen and the Beaubaton ladies will come and demonstrate their skills for us for a treat. enjoyed it. I used to like that one more than the Frog Choir, but now that the Frog Choir's got new beats, I think I like the Frog Choir a little better. But I enjoyed their acrobatics of the Durmstrang gentlemen, and I always enjoy when the Mo Baton girls go, oh, because it's ridiculous. Um, so that's what that one is. That's one I wouldn't say go out of your way for, but definitely check the times on the app. And if you're having to be around or have a butterbeer or something like that, might as well enjoy it get in the spirit of the Goblet of Fire before all the sad stuff happens. Just kidding, no sad stuff ever happens. These books are riveting and wonderful and very uplifting and not at all upsetting. Anyway, um, speaking of butterbeer, it's time for our third one. So this late in the evening, the other butterbeer cart is closed. So you can go to this butterbeer cart right here, which has a line that looks like out to here. Um, there doesn't look to be a long line at Three Broomsticks, so you could go in there and order it, but remember you have to sit down and eat in there, there's no to-go. But, I believe they also sell butterbeer at the Hogshead. I know they sell the regular, let's see if they have the frozen, and then I could just get it there. It doesn't look like there's a long line, let's go check it out. Butterbeer, mere, butterbeer's going in here. Okay, that's enough of that song I just made up. All right, I confirmed with the bartender that they do in fact serve the frozen kind in here. And look, I only have to wait behind two people for a butter pier. This video is now just how to not wait in lines for your delicious Hogwarts treats. And I think, I would like to think you guys aren't mad about that. Look at this butter beer cart line. And we already have ours. The Hogshead sometimes has a really long line because people want their delicious brews and other cocktails and things. But if not, it's definitely good to check, otherwise you could be waiting in a line this long for nothing. What a better spot to drink my final butter beer. Oh, it's so sweet. Mm. Okay, this is gonna be a hot take. I think the frozen is my least favorite. I know that's like aggressive. But here's the thing, it's so sweet. Like, the hot is really sweet, but I like that it's warm and cozy. And then the regular has like spice to it in the drink part, and by spice I obviously don't mean like hot. I mean like like autumnal or winter spices. You can taste a little bit. My order of like, if I, if I were to order one in the park and it was an, a, a chilly day, my order would go hot, regular, frozen. My order of ones I think you should drink though is most people like the frozen, so I should guess I should say frozen and then regular and then hot. But I really like the regular. I think the regular is the underrated hit because not enough people like that one. But really, can you ever go wrong if you're drinking butterbeer? Okay, my butterbeer and I are gonna head over and check off our last two attractions. Right now Forbidden Journey is 55. Flight of the Hippogriff is 60. We're actually gonna do Flight of the Hippogriff first for two reasons. One, I don't think I wanna ride Forbidden Journey after a full butterbeer. And two, Flight of the Hippogriff has been really long all day. 60 is the lowest I've seen it. It's hit capacity multiple times, meaning they can't even fit anyone else in the line because they only have one buck, uh, one buck beak, one Hippogriff running right now. So I don't wanna risk it getting longer and then not being able to do Forbidden Journey. And I really don't wanna risk the line hitting capacity again and then I don't get to do it and I fail the challenge. So we're gonna go fly with the hippogriffs. 
Also, yes, you can bring in drinks and snacks into the lives at Universal. Hello. Thank you. Um, unlike Disney, they changed that. Um, you do need to be stationary when you take your mask off to drink it. Don't abuse the rule. Um, but if you're stationary on your marker, you can take a sip of your drink. Um, I mean, don't bring like a full meal in. I mean, I guess you could, but you know, a coffee, a water, a butter beer. That's fine. Almost, almost to the load. I'm about next. It's actually only been about 35 minutes at this point, which really isn't too bad. Um, this is their kid coaster. So this is a good one to do if you've got people that are riding Hagrid's or Forbidden Journey and you've got someone in the party that's not tall enough. I wouldn't recommend waiting too, too long for it though. I think 30 minutes or so is about the max I would recommend. Um, and if it doesn't have a long line and you are a big Harry Potter fan, I do recommend riding it at least once for the view of Hogwarts and for the Buckbeak animatronic. As far as intensity on this one goes, I'd put it above the Barnstormer, maybe Mine Train, maybe not quite as, it's not as long as Mine Train, but it has a little more zip definitely than the Barnstormer. All right, it's 8.20 and there's only a 45 minute effort in journey so it was worth the wait it was remember 110 120 much much longer earlier today now it's only 45 so let's get ourselves a locker and go to hogwarts i love this attraction queue this attraction makes me super nauseous because it's like a simulator and it, you sit on a chair and then it's an arm and it moves you all about and upside down and it's a lot but the queue is so cool, and Harry Potter fans, you gotta at least walk through the queue. Obviously, better to walk through the queue if you're not gonna ride when there's not as long of a line, so you can look at all the details and not waste time just going through the queue. But um, again, I did a whole Easter eggs video, so we will definitely link that for you. But like, for example, here's the one-eyed witch with a hump, which you may know is the statue that leads you to the tunnel to um, Hogsmeade that Harry uses in Prisoner of Azkaban. Back it up, let's back it up, let's back it up. Look whose office is right back there. Boom. That says Severus Snape on it. Hello, Salazar. Helga, how do you do? Rowena, Godric, hello to all of you, but mostly you. Ooh, and now we come into Dumbledore's office. There's so many Easter eggs in here. Godric Gryffindor's sword, the Pensieve, the Albus alive. It's a, it's a delight in here. Okay, so Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. The queue is amazing, and you need to go through it if you're a Harry Potter fan. But there are some awesome animatronics, like a dragon. The Dementors are very scary, so just, like, do it. You're going to get nauseous, probably, if you're pro motion sickness. But, like, it's okay. Just do it at the end of the night like I did, and then you're not going to ruin the rest of the day. The queue ended up only taking about 30 minutes, and it dumps you into Filch's Emporium of Confiscated Goods, which is a really great shop. And it's Mr. Filch's, the caretaker. So if you look around, you can see things that he's confiscated. There's a lot of Weasley's Wizard Weezes, Weezes products up here. You can see some copies of the Quibbler. So great. And this is a good spot. Maybe we can find my Slytherin gear in here. Found some Slytherin gear. I already own that sweatshirt. I already own that backpack. Do I need a travel mug? Socks? Hmm. Ooh, there's more back here. This is where the lockers actually used to be. And now they've just expanded the shop. On behalf of all the Slytherins, I would like to start a petition against this collection. There's a collection of merchandise here where they put one word and the logo. So like loyal for the Hufflepuff. What do you think it's gonna say on the Ravenclaw? Wise, you're correct. What do you think it's going to say on Gryffindor? Brave? Great. What do you think it's going to say on the Slytherin? Cunning, ambitious, bold. Oh no. Shrewd. Really? I don't want a shrewd coffee mug. If that said bold or ambitious, that would be my Slytherin trinket. But no. 
So can we not with that? Look at all this cool Marauder's Map collection. But still, I haven't found a Slytherin trinket. We could still go to Dervis and Banjis though. I used to say Dervish and Bangs, but I've been re-listening to Harry Potter on audiobook read by Jim Dale, which is like a constant in my life, but he says Dervish and Banjis. So now I feel like I should say it like Jim Dale. Oh, so beautiful at night. And let's head off to Dervish. And hopefully that will be our last stop of the night. That's the last thing on my list is to buy something that represents your house. Take home a house souvenir. Let's hope I can find one. So if you come in this way, this is actually the owl post. And I love it in here because look at all the owls. So if you needed to send a letter and you don't have an owl of your own, um, you could borrow one of these. But I like, the, oh look, this one won an award. Good for this guy. A top deliverer. Oh, good for you. But what are you doing? You, you clearly aren't doing that well. You might want to step it up. Please don't give me that look. This is another shop where you can buy a wand. This is attached to Ollivander's uh, where the interactive experience is. So they have all the wands in here as well. Um, you can just talk to a witch or wizard in here. They will help you figure out um, who there is, and you can get your wand right here as well. So remember that pro tip I gave you about going into the Gorgon and Burks? You may be able to also come back here and grab a wand without too much of a wait um, if you're on this side. I mean, of course I could go full robe. I don't think that is necessary. Is this a scrunchie? Oh my gosh, I didn't know they actually sold these. I don't think they have. I think these are kind of new. All right. Well, that feels like a must, but also is this purse a must? And now I go in from buying one thing to like 20 things? Look at that purse, I don't need that. What, what am I gonna fit in there? Okay, the wizard confirms that the scrunchies, they have them in all four houses, are new this week. Obviously, that is a must for me because I love scrunchies and I legit always want Slytherin ones and I've never been able to find one that I like. So that is coming home. But maybe I need something else. I just found a whole bunch of pins. Do I need a pin? It's possible. Okay, there's this very jazzy one. Oh my goodness. Oh wow, that is fancy. They have it for the other houses too. It's got the whole crux. Get it? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So it's like the snake and the locket and then the diadem and then the cup. And then because Gryffindor isn't a horcrux, he's lame just kidding he's like brave or whatever um the sword wow those are dope whoa there's a quibbler pin i'm not much of a pin collector mostly because i feel like if i started i would never stop buying them and i'm really seeing that would be true right now because i want to buy like 10 of these harry potter pins Ooh. okay <laughs> do i need a prefect pin like, we can assume I would be a prefect, right? I'd like to assume that anyway. That's the Slytherin ambition coming out. Ooh, is there a head? There's a head boy Slytherin. I wonder if there's a head girl Slytherin. Okay, so I'm definitely getting the scrunchie because obviously. But now I want a pin too. And I don't know how to. I like the look of the prefect, but I like the idea of being the head girl. So I'm gonna let the wizard decide. Kind of like how the wand chooses the wizard. I'm gonna let the wizard decide the pin. Okay, well, I talked to the wizard and he said that I had head girl energy. So now I have a head girl pin that I'm probably gonna put on my backpack. So I'm glad to have found some cool merchandise and I'm obsessed with those scrunchies. And the scrunchie was 12, the pin was 12. It's a theme park, so things are expensive, but it's nice that you could get like something little and unique and not spend a ton of money on it and still have like a really cool take home. They've got really cool bookmarks. If you're reading the books, you could use a really cool bookmark. They have all that stationery, keychains, Christmas ornaments, pins. They have really unique stuff that you can take home with you. So I say, obviously whenever you're in a theme park, I think shopping is a part of it and taking home something special is something I always looked forward to when I was little too, was picking out that special thing. Um, so I hopefully today I showed you some different options. You can adopt a creature, you can take 
become something from Weezes or the Weezes, definitely get yourself some kind of treat from one of the candy shops, and then I think you gotta get something with your house insignia. I'm sorry, I'm gonna write a howler about these howlers. So I'm just trying to talk and the howlers won't stop. Well, friends, that is a wrap on my Harry Potter challenge. We did it. I set out with a list of 28 different activities in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and we did all 28. We did every single attraction. We went to both restaurants. We had a bunch of snacks and treats along the way. We visited the shops. We did magic. So, so much fun. Had the ultimate Harry Potter day here at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I hope that you had fun following along, got a little magic in your day, and I mostly hope that you learned some tips and tricks on how to navigate the Wizarding World of Harry Potter here at Universal Orlando. It literally took all day. I was in the park for 14 hours to do it all, but again, it's spring break, it's super busy, but take these tips, use them when it's not this busy, and you can have an excellent, magical day. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at All Ears Net, and until next time, y'all, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Like, really magical. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.